they're, they're saints. Everyone who dies or anyone who gets injured, they're saints and heroes and role models. Um, but then when they get ill, they don't want to be known. The government doesn't want to know them. Now, now let's look at a little bit more detail on unaccountable and, un and uncontrollable. If you thought for a minute that the government was a careful, considerate caretaker of our tax money, put that thought in the bin straight away. Because I have a little list here, it's an impressive list of projects that are over budget and undermanned. And here, here's the bill, here, here's the list. The 16 billion for the Joint Strike Fighters is well on its way to becoming an iconic debacle like the Collins class submarines. Well on its way. The Sea Sprite helicopter was cancelled in 2008 because it was seven years late, seven years mind you, and we had spent a billion dollars. We still haven't got a Sea Sprite helicopter after spending a billion dollars. The Wedgetail Airborne Early Warning Program is four years overdue. The Tiger Armed Reconnaissance Helicopter is also four years overdue and mired in contractual disputes. The upgrade of the M113 armed personnel carrier is three years overdue. If you look at the uh, audit report on the Defence Department, the word poor comes out a lot of the time. Here's the word. Poor budgeting. These are, these are my, no, not my words, these are the words of the auditor. Poor budgeting. Poor lines of responsibility. Poor contract management. Poor project administration. This is from a media report in 2010, those figures that that list. Another a recent example uh, is the Abrams tanks. I don't know whether you recall that, but 50 Abrams tanks were bought by Australia a couple of years ago. The Abrams tank, uh, it doesn't do miles per gallon, it does gallons per mile. And everyone said, don't buy them, they're too heavy and they're second hand. They're, no, 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 we want them, we want them. And they said, but even if you buy them, you can't transport them anyway. Oh, no worries. They bought, they bought three planes big enough to carry them. They're called C-17s for many hundreds of millions of dollars. And now in the present budget, the budget came, that came out in May uh, this year, they've set aside several million dollars to mothball those tanks. Mothball those tanks after hundreds of millions of dollars spent on them. So you can see why we're saying the, that um, this is an uncontrollable and unaccountable department. And um, the list could go on. It is almost as if the military is constitutionally incapable of buying any new stuff without being overcharged and, where, and without any assurance of anything ever being delivered. And the, the sacrifice of several heads of department hasn't improved matters. Let me illustrate the extent of our spending on the military and how it holds back the country. Spending on the military hovers around 30 billion at the moment, out of a total budget of about 300 billion to run Australia. In other words, we spend 10% of our disposable income on the military. The amount spent is roughly equivalent to what we spend on education, federally. It's somewhere in the vicinity of $80 million a day. It's claimed to be, we're claimed to be, the second highest spender on the military in the world on a per capita basis. They're not my figures. They're Stephen Smith's figures. Um, it's the, in, in real terms, we're the 13th biggest spender. 13th biggest. We're not the 13th biggest country, but we're the 13th biggest spender on the military. Now, if you, uh, you may not know this, but in 2009, this is what the white paper said. This is a description that I got from that wonderful left-wing magazine called The Australian. 
just, just three years ago, Australians were told in the 2009 Defence White Paper that there was a possibility, long term but startling nonetheless, that in the decades to come, they might be fighting a war against China. The possibility of conflict with a superpower, a trading partner and a crucial pillar of the Australian economy would require building a very potent Australian Defence Force. With 12 big new submarines, 12 mind you, a giant landing ship able to carry a thousand troops, tanks and the works, air warfare destroyers to protect the lot and about 100 revolutionary joint strike fighters. They're the F-35s I was talking about. Now if you just consider the impl implication of buying the subs, the planes and the air warfare destroyers, the sum of that is a hundred, is, sorry, is 47 billion dollars. 47 billion. Now, conservatively, if you, over the life of those particular uh, machines, they will cost three times what they cost to buy. So we're signing up to $188 billion for those three items, $188 billion. Um, and of course, going on past evidence, there's no guarantee that they'll ever arrive down here in Garden Island or wherever. So, so this is the money we're signing over to an unaccountable, uncontrollable department. Despite the myriad of other needs brought on by climate change, the upgrade of infrastructure, rail, roads, etc., and the ever-present needs of health and education, we're signing up for that amount of money, enormous amounts, vast seas of money. The description of the problem is the first step. The main task is to change it. The military have to be held to account in the, in the parliament, but how to do that? when both Liberal and Labor are basically the same in, when it comes to the military. I'd be surprised uh, if, if you knew who the defence uh, spokesperson was for the opposition. I had to look it up myself, actually. Um, it's David Johnson, for the senator from Western Australia. He's not, he's not as well known as the shadow for migration, the shadow for an environment, because there's hardly any discussion of the military. It doesn't get discussed in Parliament. The Greens are valiant, and even if we go to war, that doesn't get discussed. Uh, five people decide. Five people in the inner cabinet decide whether we go to war or not. It's not voted on. Our representatives don't vote on war. So the, the media are compliant and unbalanced when it comes to military matters. Since the widely reported charge of bias against the ABC by the Howard government minister Alston in the lead up to the Iraq war in 2003, the ABC avoids the issue like the plague. On the rare occasion when they do cover military matters, they deal with them by having a government spokesperson, usually Stephen Smith, and then out trots Neil James from the Defence Force Association, a, gov a arms manufacturing funded think tank. So you get two similar views on any issue to do with the military, and then they close the discussion and go on to something else. Reform from inside the military. Uh, there's been some reforms. The recent reforms have been in the shape of a new military justice system, gays in the military, uh, the role of women in the military and uh, uh, various issues around that. All these are important issues but they don't strike at the heart of the issue. Why is our military so bloated, so out of control? It is clear that the government, parliament are not exercising any control and the media is not any help. Internal reforms uh, um, are not dealing with the basic problems either, so perhaps we can look to the community. The official community involvement in the defence matters started about eight years ago. And these forums, sponsored by the government and chaired by people with astounding conflicts of interest, were held. The first one was 
chaired by uh, Peacock, a former defence minister. The second one was, for, was chaired by a former New South Wales ALP senator and at present a director in an arms manufacturing company called Thales. And um, these, um, these uh, inquiries, surprisingly enough, followed a yes minister pattern. You never hold an inquiry unless you're certain of the outline, of the outcome. And guess what the outcome was? Yes, yes, you should spend more. And the people who were getting up and uh, saying, no, 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 spend less, were completely ignored. We, we do not have to accept that the military have to have carte blanche with their processes. As a community, we have to put a break on them from the streets, from our institutions, from our trade unions. The time has come for a peace economy and to get off the war economy. The government has announced that it is bringing down a new white paper in 2013. This is clearly a response to the new US demands on Australia arising from Obama's pivot to Asia and the Indo-Pacific. As a first step, we insist that there be community consultation on this new and probably more expensive, more expensive uh, planning for the future of the military. We asked Scott Ludlam of the Greens to ask about the community consultation at Senate Estimates. In answer to his question, a spokesperson for the uncontrollable, unaccountable department said, I do not see at this point the public process consultation being anything like that what was done in 2009. I think it will be concentrating on a couple of, a couple of what I describe as peak groups, peak organisations, some think tanks, industry groups and so, on, and so forth rather than widespread public town hall kinds of meetings. Those who get a say in the Defence Department are those who will profit. The fox looking after the hen house type of operation. And they, so that the gravy train rolls on, rolls on for, the, for the arms manufacturers, both here and overseas. I, uh, I have... Um, put a postcard on your, uh, your tables there. And um, on the back of it, it says this. Since we, the people, have to forego medical, educational and other services to fund Australia's huge military expenditure, we should be allowed to submit our views on the 2013 white paper. That's fair enough, isn't it? You see the image there, there's the sort of guy from the obvious um, capitalist um, throwing money around. Not his money, our money on planes. We ask, uh, Hannah, would you hand, put your hand up? If you would like and we'll, we'll send them for you, fill them in and hand them to Hannah or myself at the end of the night. And, uh, and by all means, take them, take extra copies and Get, the, get this going off to Smith as soon as you can. Okay, well, thanks, everyone, and thanks for... Let's get out there and let's reverse the unaccountable and uncontrollable department. Thank you.